Welcome to Heroes and Troys, your guide to movies and TV shows about sci-fi, superheroes, Disney in action, Marvel of 2DC, from Star Wars to Star Trek, from James Bond to The Fast and the Furious, we review the theatrical films and streaming delights you care about most. Uh, tonight we review Wonder Woman 1984, uh, one of the few superhero films we've got this year. <laughs> because this year sucks and we're ready for 2021 right right all right I can't get here fast enough yeah <laughs> i know days away and we're still like right, okay let's introduce the crew with me tonight starting off with podcasting rock star and international cosplay queen vanessa thompson oh in her Wonder Woman <laughs> outfit oh yes um and do y'all know what year i was born I, you know, I really don't know if I well, want to know. Well, guess. 1984? Yes. The best year in the 80s, uh, man. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Christopher, she's a child. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I was born the same year. Oh, right? there you go. In my <laughs> mind. Yeah. Get out of my lawn. All right. Also joining us tonight is award-winning filmmaker, Christopher G. Moore. <laughs> I'm cosplaying as Trevor. Uh, but the, the wish dude, dude, version. <laughs> the dude that I guess I give you the, the wish version. He, oh, wow! Like those memes. Yes, I'm so confused, but that's okay. <laughs> very, very weird science. <laughs> but anyway, I know. It was like, oh, that that was maybe weird. In the movie. All right, what well, we're going to do? Weird stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> we're going to cover Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> All right, this was a film that we were eagerly looking forward to coming out. I think wasn't it originally like the spring, and then it was the fall, and then Christmas, and it finally landed in theaters and HBO Max day and date December 25th, 2020, and uh, is <laughs> by itself wasn't that big a deal, but when. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Warner Brothers, you dog. Uh, started adding everything else from 2021 to the mix. It became the beginning of the huge controversy. All right, we'll get into a little bit of that probably during the conversation too. But the film itself is directed by Patty Jenkins, written by Patty Jenkins, Jeff Johns, and Dave Callahan. The cast includes Gal Gadot or Gal Gadot. I've heard both. Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal. Yes, the Mandalorian himself. Robin Wright. Connie Neeson and Lily Espel, who plays young Wonder Woman or young Diana. Uh, the synopsis goes rewind to the 1980s as Wonder Woman's next big screen adventure finds her facing two all new foes, Max Lord and the Cheetah. That's right. And the Cheetah. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, have superheroes not learned the thing about too many villains? I like lots of villains, so I'm the wrong person to. There you go. There you ask go. That question. Oh, I love yeah. Batman Returns. So, um, <laughs> well, I think that was the one they did right, and then from there on, they've had. What had is troubles. too many villains, though? Yeah. Is two too many? Is three too many? I think it depends on how you how you're using them. Yeah. True. All right. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to give our first impressions. So we're going to talk about the movie a little bit. And during our discussion, uh, we're probably going to get into spoilers. We're going to try to avoid them during our first thoughts. Uh, but when we get into our discussions, all bets are off. So, uh, yeah, that's going to happen. Then we're going to give our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene, that should be a good one for this episode. I think it's going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right, let's get things started. And Vanessa, you're up first. What was your first impression of Wonder Woman 1984? Uh, I had a lot of fun watching this. Um, I I don't think I could ever hate a Wonder Woman movie. I'll, I'll just be happy to have more of it. With that being said, though... <laughs> This movie felt a little strange to me. Something felt a little off about it the whole time. Um, I was having a conversation earlier that said this is the most Silver Age su superhero movie that we've okay. seen. When you're talking about uh, what what it's not to spoil too much, but what it's revolving around and the the, the questions of good and evil the way they are. Um, and I don't know if maybe that's making it feel out of touch for me, 
but uh, there's a lot of things I, I have to say once we get into spoilers. I'm kind of <laughs> tiptoeing around at the moment, but uh, there's some things that really just struck me as odd about it. But there were some moments, especially the moments between Diana and Steve, that were just magical. <laughs> they were so good on screen together that I would, I would just love to see more of them. Can we do like some retroactive movies where it's just them together palling around? <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. Would you say this movie gets a lot of when it gets things right, it gets them really right, and then when it gets them wrong, it really gets them wrong? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a very clear cut way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christopher G. Moore, you're up next, sir. What was your first impression of Wonder Woman, 1984? Uh, first of all, I want to say I I can understand people m not liking it, but I think. I'm kind of disappointed in people's vitriol that's being thrown at this film. I almost feel like it going to HBO Max has just allowed a lot of people who probably wouldn't have seen it in theaters to to weigh in on it and just to weigh in negatively because they probably didn't like the character to begin with um, or because it's a female character. Um, at the same time, this is not a perfect movie. I think there are moments that I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It actually, there's moments that remind me of the first Superman um, you know, the, 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 or the second one, <laughs> well, some people are comparing it, even comparing it to the third one, but, um, but yeah, th there's those elements as well, which there's elements of that that are in other things, you know, I mean, the, the, the cheetah character is almost like Jamie Foxx's character, you know, in the Spider-Man film, um, which, you know, I, there was somebody who, who's like, what, what's up with, um, these villains that that have messy hair and glasses, and then when they become a villain, their hair is nice, and they lose the glasses. Because you know, you, you think about like Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. You oh, think about okay. Jamie Fox oh, as right. the you know the dirty guy. So it's it's kind of funny how you have that thing that um, I think that goofy aspect of it. Some people compare it to probably like Superman two um, or those type of things. But you know the, the 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 thing that happens in the mall, I think, feels very Superman. Mm -hmm. And um, I think because it it's not, I think also because it's not in that sort of dark universe that the DC movies is sort of created. I kind of like that. I wish we had more films that are more like goody two shoes, nice and not exactly having to revel in such dark things. You know, like I think some people compared like what she did in like, was it justice league where she had to stop this guy from killing kids. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a big difference there, but it, you know, this film, I mean, I think somebody made a joke on Twitter that should be called Wonder Woman 84 Minutes. It should, it should have been, it doesn't deserve a two and a half hour, two and a half, 40 minute or however long two hours and length. Minutes. I don't know why films have to be that. I know. Because there's a lot that could have been cut out of this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's very scattered. It's like you have that opening scene, which is amazing. And I could, I could see any young girl uh watching that and like oh that's awesome um because it's so big you know um and then you have you know even some of the action things i think are really well done but you know the storyline's a little bit scattered i think you know it, the the logic around things like the the wishing stone it's weird how you can make walls appear but you in order to make a dead person appear, they have to inhabit another body. And there, there's a lot of consensual things in that that are kind of sketchy if you think about it. But um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of weird how the logic goes in and out. And then it's like, I, you know, she, she has, she has that Superman thing where all of a sudden one minute she's wearing regular clothes and next minute she's, I almost wish that they had a scene where she just like spinned like the old Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and her, her thing appeared and, and so yeah it's i mean you know and then all of a sudden you know these these powers emerge that she didn't have previously but you can sort of see how that is but it's kind of cool that she could do those things so yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that's that's very scattered and 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 up and down you know it's like you know you know me i love a good 80s Arrow type thing, but it's almost like they didn't even lean into it as much, other than the whole clothing montage. Well, we'll, we'll get into that, but um, because yeah. I really I want to discuss that as well. But um, but yeah, it, it's 
I think people saying, I mean, there's someone person like, this is the worst movie of the year. Oh my God, this is the worst DC. It's like, it is not. There's a lot of Marvel films that I think that are worse. And I think the, the first two Thor films are worse than this. So there's, I think there's a lot of Marvel films that I would say are a whole lot worse than this. I, 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 was, I enjoyed this film. It's long. It's scattered. There's parts where I'm going, what? I don't, you know, uh, I think the, the wishing stone is sort of so far out there. It's kind of um, hard to grasp onto. And I think they, they, they do that big thing that you see in like Michael Bay films without giving anything away at the end where it's like, Oh, we're all, it's all come together. And peace and unity type stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a little bit scattered. You know, I had problems with the first one. I think that the third act in the first one isn't good. Um, I think, I think the third act in this one is better to some degree, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it seems a little bit lost in what it's trying to go for. Um, the, 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 the cheetah and the, the Lord thing are sort of seem to be very opposite to where that should have been worked a little bit better. Or maybe they should have just focused on one villain mm -hmm, like maybe. Been the cheetah, um, or the max Lord. So, um, so yeah, it's it's it, yeah. I, I don't. I, it's 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 really hard to even <laughs> explain because the movie doesn't make a lot of sense. But I don't really expect you know. You, there's there's logic holes in every Marvel film, you know, in every bat in every Batman film, every more you know superhero film. There are logic flaws or holes in it. So, um, and I think people. I think people are just negatively going against this when you could say the same stuff about other films, but I don't know. I, I think there's some beautiful scenes in this, you know, yeah, I'd agree with that. I, 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 there's some beautiful, the, the, the scene above the fireworks and, you know, there's some really, you know, great scenes, some great action pieces, that whole thing in the, um, Egypt, I think, you know, it felt very Indiana Jones, how that played out. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think people are being a little bit too harsh on it. I can understand people not liking it. That's fine. I enjoyed enjoyed the film for the most part. I just think that they they could have easily edited it down and maybe taken a different approach. But um, I don't. I, I I enjoyed it. I don't. I really don't understand people's negativity. But you know, it's art is subjective, and people can not like it. But I think just being excessively mean like people are, it just seems a little bit more about. Um, it's almost like, oh, now I don't feel so bad about toxic fanboys in the Star Wars community because it feels like <laughs> they're the, everywhere. The superhero community is, everywhere. is just as bad, if not worse. Yeah, I I feel I I understand what you're saying, Christopher, and I and I feel similar. I I was I really enjoyed it. I was like, I, yeah, it's imperfect. Uh, there's not enough Wonder Woman into Wonder Woman. You know, we yeah. talked about like, you know, we want more Godzilla in our Godzilla movies. Well, I'd like to have more Wonder Woman in our Wonder Woman movies. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of Diana Prince, so I, we're not lost. Uh, you know, it's her story. And and they don't play those two characters, you know, the, you know, the, the Peter Parker and the Spider-Man, if you will, as, as different as... Peter Parker and Spider Man are uh, at times, right? They they're pretty much the same character minus the the costume that she wears when she's, you know, in battle. Uh, so you still get, you still feel it, and because it had so much going on with her and and um, Steve Trevor, you you like it, right? You you enjoy it because that's that's really the thrust of the 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 story at its heart is, you know, she got her wish. Right, she gets her wish, and she gets Steve Trevor back, and now he's the fish out of water. So there's some role reversal thrown in for good measure, and and you know that romance that they have and the the attraction, which is still strong. You know, Chris Pine and Gal Gadot have or Gadot have you know great chemistry together. So those scenes work wonderfully well, uh, especially when you know <laughs> he finds out the, the radar. Yeah, you should have told me about radar. Um, you know, so there's, but at times, um, it gets it gets kind of wonky. It also suffers from the lack of consequences, which we'll get into more when the spoilers. Uh, uh, some things are a little bit of a stretch. You know, they push things a little far, and then to 
to roll it back the way they intend to. Yeah, so it, I think a lot of people are reacting to that, maybe, you know, the length of the movie with the lack of presence of Wonder Woman in costume. Um, I also noticed that the music, we didn't, yeah, I didn't. Uh, that's, but, that's the first thing I was going to say post spoilers. So I don't right, know. Because right. that's yeah. a big thing. Yeah, so we'll, I'll hold off on that. But yeah, the music didn't live up as much. So there are there are good reasons to criticize this movie, but there are still g- good reasons to applaud it as well. I, it's it's a fine movie. It's um, it let's put it this way: it's a far better <laughs> Wonder Woman two than Thor two was, right? <laughs> uh, to bring that in, uh, you know, sometimes the. Uh, you know, but, but at, the, at the same time, on the flip of the coin, it's, you know, it's no Spider-Man 2. Because Spider-Man 2 with Doc Ock is probably the best, you know, probably superhero film still, uh, arguably. Um, so, you know, it, it's really difficult, right? It's really difficult to come up with the consensus because I get it. I get it. But in, in the end, I... My final thought, my first, my first impression, the final thought on my first impression is that I, I liked it. I had a good time, and I think there's plenty to uh, discuss on the positive side. Um, maybe more than there is on the negative side. I think people are concentrating on it too much. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about that music, Vanessa, because that really bothered me. Because okay, right? Because when we. In in Batman versus Superman, right, and and Justice League, and then of course in Wonder Woman, that that music played so strong when she appeared, and they they altered it here, they changed it up, and it didn't sit well with me. Here's the overall thing: I don't think this is the movie we in, were intended to see. I think things happened, especially after they decided to release on HBO Max, that changed the movie that we're seeing. There's not one eighty song in this movie. In the promos, they had 80s music all over it. You don't hear one there 80s isn't? song in this, no, in there the whole isn't. movie. You think they had to drop it all oh. because they couldn't afford it anymore? Maybe they lost the licensing because they decided to go to HBO Max. I have no idea. I didn't have a chance to like really look into it. But That's interesting. There's so many things about this that just don't make sense and don't have the kind of punch that a Wonder Woman movie should have that feels like, I don't, it doesn't feel like a movie that would be released in theaters. It just really doesn't feel that way to me. And I feel like at some point we're going to hear that or we're going to get like the Patty Jenkins cut or something like that is going to come out because this movie, like y'all were saying, it's all over the place. And really it, it doesn't even portray Diana in the best light through the whole time. And I understand trying to humanize her, but there's, there's just so much about this. Like... <laughs> I, I absolutely adore goofy Steve Trevor. I yeah, love yeah. <laughs> he's not goofy, right? He was more of a, a serious guy. And I, I don't know, just things felt so odd to me about watch, what I, while I was watching this the whole time. And the music is one of the major things that stood out to me. Yeah, I, I didn't notice about the 80s. Did you hear an 80s music, Christopher? There's like one, um, there's one, um, Frankie goes to Hollywood song that they play when she walks into the, um, the museum party or whatever. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh, how, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, how okay. can you make a movie that's set in the eighties and not use 80 songs? Because there's like, I mean, I think that's one of the, sure. the great things about stranger things is like the, how they incorporate. So, I mean, like. I mean, you have a, a cheetah woman and you can't play like Hungry Like the Wolf or Man Eater or something, you know? I mean, there's like so many opportunities to play some badass, fun it's 80s songs. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like, and even it barely felt 80s to me. And, I, and it's actually, and even some of the, even some of the music score, I think Hans, Hans Zimmer is like such a, a, you know, I've heard he's kind of a lazy composer from what I've oh! heard through the grapevine. Wow. But, um, Okay. There's like, there's, you know, when she's flying, yeah, he copies music from Sunshine. Um, and it's, and somebody on TikTok pointed it out. I was like, it's literally the same music notes, the same orchestral notes from the Sunshine score. So it's like, what? Um, yeah. And so it doesn't, 
I mean, granted, I mean the the music they play. I think at the very beginning with the um, the uh, the arena scene, I think works really well. But when she's like flying around in that mall, how awesome would it have been if they played some eighties, some pop eighties tune while she's kicking ass? You know, I, I, that was so much, so many great opportunities. You know, because because this this film feels like an eighties action film. I mean, that's why it it feels. Uh, when, when did Superman come out? Was that late seventies or early eighties? Late seventies, seventy eight. Yeah. Okay, but it, but still, I mean, the, it felt very Superman ish. It felt, it felt like the superheroes from that time, and so, which leans into that whole sil silver age. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Very yeah. like wholesome, uh, shiny kind of comic cause, book. Yeah, because it's very gritty, and and she's she's doing, you know the thing where she doesn't want to use guns and she's doing all these things to, so people don't get hurt, you know, making sure people are okay. You don't really, really see that that often with other superheroes. I love that aspect of it. And I think, I think, she, you know, she's as close to like uh, Captain America that we have, you know, with that kind of goody two shoes type character. But, um, you know, at, at the same time, I'm just like, I think I think that's the main thing I came away from uh, with is that there's so many missed opportunities with how they portray things. I think because they leaned into Kristen Wiig because of comedic sensibilities. Um, I would have loved her play straight, you know, dramatic, you know. Look, I think that is 50 percent of the downfall of this movie is Kristen Wiig. Oh, I, I have a I have a problem with her comedy in general and i think a lot of america does um and she's she all right she wasn't hot enough to pull off this character she absolutely not like you you can't have this going on and expect people to think that that is sexy right that all these guys are gonna fall for her and i know it's magic and all that but you have to have a character that then when she does become that way can em embody that confidence and that power. And Kristen Wiig does not have that. And I just don't think she fit in this movie. And I think that casting was a detriment to this movie. Mm, interesting. What do you, do you also think that the use of her transformation is her power to run in high heels is, is doing her any benefit or <laughs> women any benefit? So right? stupid. Like that was a really dumb choice to make. I mean, I get it one time. One time was cute, but then to keep going with it. And then and then you get into her actually being Cheetah. Like, what was that abomination <laughs> that we saw? I cannot stand by what they did. First of all, what it if you're if they have Kristen Wig, she didn't even look like Kristen Wig after she transformed at mm -hmm. all. She looked like a completely different person. And that was a horrible looking cheetah. It looked terrible. She looked more like um, Baba Yaga <laughs> with the stray hairs floating in the wind. Like that looked mm -hmm. terrible to me. I know I'm I'm getting real. real uh, dark. Did she look better than cats though? Come on, somebody. It's more, it was more Thundercat. It's more Thundercats with winged eyeliner. Um, no. It 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 wasn't. <laughs> it was like a combination where they were trying to do it like part practical and, <sighs> but it. I mean. Granted, I, I did like the fight scenes between her. The fight scenes were good. Um, but I, I, I think the design of that um, didn't exactly work. I mean, it's kind of hard to pull that off, you know, <laughs> as we learned from the Cats movie. But it's, you know, you know, I, I think, I don't know. I think there could have been a way they could have pulled it off. But yeah, I, I think for me, I, I didn't really have anything to do with, I think for me, the Kristen Wiig character, I just mainly had problems because I felt like, she was acting in a different movie, you know, and I love, I, I love Chris. Yeah. I love her comedy. She's in, but I think that comedy sensibility always feels kind of weird when everybody is acting a different way. Like the first film had elements of comedy, but it wasn't like goofy comedy. She felt like, th it felt like she was playing like an SNL character in this as opposed to a real character. And I hate that when they have like the nerdy nebbish characters that seem like that's, I hated Jamie Foxx's performance in that Spider-Man film. Cause he just seemed like, it's sort of like what Jim, it's sort of like what Jim Carrey did in Bat was it Batman Forever, you know, where he's like, like the, the weird nerdy 
character before and i don't know i, I just hate that because that feels like it feels so Chris, don't you dare i know i feel so tropish <laughs> you know what i mean it feels very tropish and um you know i think i, I liked her when she was in the middle phase um i liked it when she confronted the, uh, diana and oh yeah know. when she was in the middle phase i think I think it'd be better if she just stayed in that middle phase and she just wore like cheetah prints. You know yeah, what I mean? She, just she, like she didn't necessarily have to go full animal. We're gone more practical with the effects, right? Just slight, like you're saying, slight things here and there to make her more cat-like. Yeah, but if, more if she'd worn like like animal print and like like an animal fur collar, you know, something more like that to go along with the. I think when she went all crazy, She's not like nowhere, when she, when she turned like to, into like. Uh, frilly fr frizzy haired emo girl I, I that was more i felt more cheetah i was like <laughs> yeah it, it, and then then the really you know i kept expecting her to, to fly <laughs> up to fly up to have it in a tire at the end <laughs> <laughs> well i i will say that i will say that i liked it when she was defending max lord i i thought that aspect of her character really worked because she was she was defending her position right because she was like no we are not giving i'm not giving up the swish yeah. And uh, so she took Max Lord's side, and I like that. I like I like that motivation, and I thought they kind of, I, 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 I you know, it put her in the right position, but it didn't really give her. They didn't really follow through with that as well as I thought they could have. If they're going to do that, they should have went all in. They didn't follow through with a lot. Well, yeah, and, uh, and, and even the Max Lord character, I think. They wasted so much time on that character. I kind of didn't really care as much. I, that almost felt like that should have been a side character. That should have been the side person for Cheetah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's one way of being fully that. focused on him because he wasn't really as interesting. And then they tried to, to shoehorn the whole thing. Like, yeah, I, I think, what was it? I was listening to Kevin Smith's Fat Man podcast and he was talking about like, um, or, or somebody in, in, in the chat and, and said that, it's funny how Pedro Pascal can be the best dad in Mandalorian, but the worst dad in this film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought he was fine in this, uh, but uh, for any any anybody that <laughs> liked the Justice League, uh, you know, after Crisis when Max Lord was introduced and he was part of, you know, he was kind of running Justice League there for a while. He was an entirely different character. He was very, um, you know, secure. He was very, he was very uh, motivated. He was a very strong character, and uh, weren't really sure what his his abilities were. Um, and to have him kind of not be that entirely here was a little bit of a character letdown for me personally. Although I, 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 while I liked how they did go about his character. If his name wasn't Max Lord, <laughs> I thought that the relationship with his son was really poorly handled. Um, really awkward and forced. Awkward and forced is a great way to put it because you didn't feel the connection to make that the ending that that art gets um, yeah. have any weight at all. It felt hollow. No, he it felt like he was always in the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. it, 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 it seemed like just one other responsibility he was trying to shirk. And didn't, and I didn't really see that connection there. So I, I and, you know, cause the whole time I'm thinking like, he's so worried about like all these things, but if people shoot nuclear weapons or any of that kind of stuff, wouldn't that affect your child? I, <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand. I think they try to go super deep. Cause you know, when they do the flashbacks of him, like, uh his dad beating him or his dad you know making him feel like crap uh and he says to his son i i just want you to be proud i want you to be proud i want you to be proud so i think what they're trying to say is his love is through becoming something as opposed to physical affection right. he wants he needs that approval because of everything he's been through in his own childhood there's a lot this is a well, with the, 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 I, it was so focused on his arc and really, we didn't have any kind of resolution to the cheetah's arc, you know, yeah, or, or his arc, really. Or, yeah, or it, well, yeah. I mean, it, I'd almost feel like maybe, maybe he should have somehow wished the wish stone into her. She could have been the conduit, and then he could just be the guy behind the. You know, I don't know. I feel like there's a better way of approaching this. I think the wish stone just added that weird element. 
when you could just wish anything yeah. into existence, it yeah. makes it a very weird. And then at the same time, like how people get to certain places so fast in the eighties, you know, <laughs> like I, I'm like, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't Diana be fired for stealing a, a jet <laughs> from her own museum? And how, how does that jet automatically have gas to go all the way no, to Egypt and back? How does Steve know how to operate that jet? I, there's like, so out many, of the I mean, that, that's where the logic comes into play where I'm like, how in the world did they get back in fourth in such a short period of time? I do like that that led into an explanation for the invisible jet. Do you like the invisible jet? All right. I really liked that. I thought it was well done. Well, it, I think how they tied go. it into how they hide the island, I think is is a brilliant way to do that. But I almost wish, I kind of wish that she would already had her own jet to begin with, you know, <laughs> instead of having yeah. to depend on the guy to fly her. Well, I was well, like, oh, well, that... well, yeah, but they couldn't. That was part of the arc. Dark was, yes, was the she so, didn't understand the fly and yeah. Right. Oh well, now yeah, now she can fly without it. But yeah, I know. I'm I'm used to the old cartoons. I know. <laughs> the comics were you, were of her flying in her visible jet, <laughs> and I kind of I kind of <laughs> like that. Although, I will say, without spoiling anything, that stinger gave me all the feels. Oh, oh did it? You like the stinger? Oh yeah. Some people are complaining about that. Stinger. I don't care. Those people can go. Yeah, they can complain all they want. Jump out of an invisible jet for all I now, care. <laughs> well, you know, there's a there's a fourth wall break there, and you know, you and I have had our fisticuffs about fourth wall breaking. I don't mind that. Okay, there's kind of a that. fourth wall break in the movie itself when she's talking at the camera, where she's talking to everyone about their wishes. Well, that's true. Yeah. Straight at the camera. Well, and I think. Um, I think the only thing they could have, I would kind of wish that they'd incorporated that more into the story in general without it just being like a stinger afterthought. But yeah, I do too. I do but too. still, it was nice because I think every, everybody's been championing a certain person to be part of this. Yeah, and I'm glad that they worked her into the canon. Mm -hmm. I like the way they, yeah, I like the way it's working out. Everybody already knows what we're talking about. Although, the, the, uh, <laughs> although that, 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 the, the golden wings. What are they made out of? Like shingles off a roof. <laughs> You're right, fuck the bar, I right? thought that. I'm like, wait, this stand up against all the men in the world, but. But I mean, I, I guess you can say that Cheetah has. I guess they're fighting norm. Maybe she was fighting normal people in that outfit, and man, she's not funny. Although it was kind of cool when Cheetah's like, whoo, like knocking out parts oh, of yeah. it, trying to claw in there. I mean, I love that fight scene where she's got the wings, but at the same time, I was thinking this seems a little bit too easy to. <laughs> to tear up but i don't know one one well kept there hanging in the yeah middle. it's like it's like <laughs> siding on my town my siding on my town home you know it's just uh, like gotta replace it every seven years uh, the, <laughs> uh let's get back to max lord because i want to talk about his resolution to his arc uh running across the field and grabbing his son because i thought that that did such and I, this is the, probably the biggest problem i have with it right that did such a disservice to the entire arc to the story, right? Because where are the consequences, right? It, it's it this this film needed those consequences. There's something, you know, that was the whole thing about the wish stone in and of itself, right? So uh, that that bothered me a lot, you know. What? So what was this movie about, right? That's kind of what it makes you feel like. I understand it's about diana's personal growth that well really it's just about diana's pain right because she's she's had her growth and she understands what she can and cannot have and what she'll have to do so it's really just a story of pain <laughs> for her uh and so i don't under i really don't understand with what they did with Max Lord, like, and then they, they, there was nothing after that either. There was no resolution to him or Cheetah. You know, the movie just kind of ends. I don't even know what happened to Cheetah. She kind of looked up to the sky and I guess she gave her wish back because she wasn't did a she? cat anymore. Did, did she? Was she? Was she? Okay. Yeah, she was a human again. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know, and that, that that leads more into the the weird feeling I have about it about this movie. Yeah, it's like you can sort of see the underlying theme of it, you know, 
how people, how we live in a society, it's about e easy gratification and people want things that they don't earn. They want to cheat their way into things. I can understand that, but still it doesn't, you know, but then still you're also basing it on like this arc of, she knew a guy for like a week <laughs> and she's been pining for him for like 70 something years pining. and uh, Chris <laughs> pining for him. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm just overthinking it. I, I kind of wish they wouldn't have her so, you know, well, we knew she overwhelmed was by her yeah, love but, for Steve Trevor. But yeah, but they'd already established that because, uh, you know, in the Justice League and the Batman movie, Batman Superman movie, right? She was yeah. after that photo. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, you know, I, I guess, the, the, or, you know, I don't know. The, 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 the film has lots of flaws. It has as many flaws as in her little wings <laughs> that you can easily tear away. I mean, there's yeah. still, you know, I, I think they, I think that's the thing that's missing. What is that main thread that we need to take away from this film that makes sense for why they went all through this stuff? I mean, I kind of wish that the wish stone would make everything go back to the way it was and yeah. see instead of letting the world be in turmoil. Cause you know, yeah, it allow people yeah. come back to life. Well, and everybody's going to remember that, right? No, you remember like, that day when that wall appeared and disappeared? Look, <laughs> every single day we're told how big of capitalist shitheads we are, you know? Like, and it just felt like this movie was telling us that more. Like, we know, I know I suck. <laughs> like, and I want to do better, but I also don't need a two and a half hour morality lesson looked at me right in the eyes and telling me, put your phone down, you know? It's just, it, it, a Wonder Woman movie shouldn't feel like that. I shouldn't feel like, I. it, it feels like a, a female stereotype, right? The, the nagging woman. And I shouldn't feel that way watching a Wonder Woman movie. Lot to, lot to think about, a <laughs> uh, lot to say. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we, we championed this film quite as much as I thought we were going to, um, but, but we got to wrap this up. We got to give our final thoughts, our score, one to five, five, and our favorite scene. Uh, but before we do, <laughs> uh, if you've listened this long, uh, first, we want to thank you. Second, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button. It's free. You just click it and it helps us a lot. We're trying to reach a thousand, so that'll help us. Um, it also if you hit the bell, you'll get reminded. So do that too. Hit the like button or dislike button. Um, we'd love to hear your comments. Were, were we off base? Did we miss something? Is there something in here that we should have, you know, said, hey, but this was great. Why didn't you talk about this? Or I want to know. Yeah, you totally missed this, dorks. I don't know. Just <laughs> let us know. Uh, but let's do it. Let's do our final thoughts, our score, and our favorite scene. Wonder Woman, 1984. Vanessa, you're up first. <laughs> Oh, final thoughts. Uh, yes, this movie had its flaws. Yes, I would watch it again. I will watch every Wonder Woman property or product that comes out because uh, I love the character. I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, and I love the stories that they're telling. There are some. There are beautiful stories in this. There are some beautiful moments between her and Steve. There are some very heartbreaking moments and realizations that she has to come to. There are some moments like we were talking about with the invisible jet that were just so good. That was so good. That was such a good way to do that. I really liked that a lot. Um, but there were some things, my personal casting biases, I know that that's, that's on me. Um, things that aren't on me is the CGI, which I think failed them. Uh, I think something felt weird about the story that we got here. And I'm still... I still feel somewhat confident that a few months down the road, we're going to hear, well, this is not the cut that was planned to be released, or here's the cut that Patty Jenkins would have done. I don't know. Some Something feels off to me about it. Um, but, you know, that being said, I'll still own it, and it'll be part of my DC collection as a, as the completest that we are here. Yeah, <laughs> um, the commercial <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it just it gives me it gives me really strange feelings, and and I don't like feeling that way about a Wonder Woman movie. I want to feel hopeful and empowered and joyous, you know, when I come out of it, and and not necessarily so downtrodden. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna give this one a three. 
Nice. Yeah, nice. I think I think a three is good. Um, and it, anytime Steve and Diana were on on screen together is just so much fun. It's so cute to see the two of them together. Um, but my f absolute favorite scene, we didn't touch on it too much, but it's when Diana is learning to fly. That absolutely oh, brought yeah. the tears. Oh, nice. Yeah. It, that that was a moment that I, I felt very overwhelmed, and you feel you feel everything in her in that moment as she's learning and she's hearing Steve's words and she's incorporating these things and she, and she knows that there's big things she has to do and she just had to make this heartbreaking horrible decision for everyone else in the universe basically or at least on planet Earth, um, and it's just such a, a special beautiful beautiful moment i think between that and the and the invisible jet those were some of my favorite moments in the movie nice, nice. all right christopher g moore final thoughts your score your favorite scene um you know uh, i can understand people not liking it i don't really understand the level of negativity towards this it almost feels like people are just doing it to to get on the bandwagon or something because it's the the target for everybody maybe that's what 2020 has created <laughs> yeah. people are just are taking out their their frustration out on this film for no reason just because now they made it available on, on uh, hbo max and i don't think it's as horrible as people made it i'd rather watch this again than man of steel batman <laughs> versus superman yeah. i'd rather watch than any of that crap Suicide squad um Oh God! Don't even get me started on that one. I'll, I'll watch the second one because it's directed by James Gunn. But um, to me, this is better. You know, it, but it, is it perfect? No. DC really has is still trying to mm -hmm. figure out their methodology, and you know, even the first Super, uh, Wonder Woman film had that third act, you know, really bad CGI villain at the end that didn't work for me. But it has that very, very powerful scene, in, you know, in the trenches and stuff. Um, and this one, I think this one has some really great action moments in it, you know, regardless of how the story plays out and how they work things or, or even the, the sketchy way they bring Steve Trevor back, which I don't understand if you have a wishing stone, couldn't it just make him come back? We didn't even talk enough about that. I, I, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, in the B2 world, um, <laughs> no, Chris. <laughs> Let me stop. stop. Let me stop. <laughs> I think I think my favorite meme for that is they they show the picture where she's she's standing next to the guy that was that he returned as, mm -hmm. and uh, and she's she's looking at him and saying mm -hmm. like I know what you look like naked, um, but uh, <laughs> she popped them too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think. I don't he know. Doesn't even know it, the yeah, poor it's, guy. It, 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 yeah. They, I think that's that. I think that that is that sums up the, how this film was very uneven. You have a wishing stone that makes things work one way, but that makes things work a different way. You can make walls appear that weren't there. You know, you can make missiles appear out of nowhere, but a person they have to like, you know, pull a, a quantum leap and <laughs> and make them appear so it's it's kind of weird I, I again there's a lot of lo logic issues with this which shouldn't happen especially when you have two and a half hours to really work those to fill those holes in the logic but i think regardless of that i think there's some great moments in it i think the opening is one of the better openings of a lot of superhero films i think it's really a powerful action scene that's really fun and uh, beautiful to watch um, you know, it's, you know, the action scene in Egypt, I mean, it, it, there's parts that really made me feel like, oh, this could, this could be Indiana Jones doing this stuff where she's usually using the door and going underneath the car and stuff. So there's some really great moments in that. The, I mean, even though it doesn't make sense why you'd fly a plane through exploding stuff like fireworks it's still a beautiful shot it looked good it. though <laughs> it did look good i don't think you'd want to fly a plane through because it's basically <laughs> it's basically explosions happening around you but you know steve trevor's not a really smart cookie when it comes to being reanimated um so, so yeah i mean it <laughs> i'm probably not helping this movie out but the more i talk no, you're not. <laughs> uh, i enjoyed those moments and, and it is a film that i wouldn't mind watching again you know, I'd, I'd watch this again than, you know, some Marvel movies and definitely the majority of DC films, except for 
Yeah. Yeah. The earlier, the Tim Burton Batman films or something. I like, I like those a lot. And I think, I don't know. There is just a lot of not, not non-cohesive elements that don't make this work the way it should. And, um, I think the action scenes work well, but just everything in between doesn't really gel as much and, and, and has as many flaws. Like I mentioned earlier, like her mm. little wings, um, so as for rating, I probably would give, I'll give a similar rating to Vanessa's. I'll give it a three. Um, you know, I can under people, I think some people just can't get past the certain issues they have, which is fine. But I think crapping on this film is just, it's a disservice to those great moments that do work in the film that, that work better than some of the, uh, as, the, as much as there's a lot of Zack Snyder fanboys, I'd, I've never been a big fan of some of the previous DC stuff that he's done, even though he's a, I guess, executive producer on this. Um, so yeah. Um, as for a favorite scene, um, um, hmm, it's a good question. Um, cause there's, there's a lot of great action moments that I, mm could pick any of those um although i i do um oh man it's hard to pick um go for it, go for it. you can do it <laughs> uh you know I, I, i'll say this i i really loved how she uses her her uh lasso she's like grabbed on the planes <laughs> Almost using it like Spider Man's like lightning bolts, lightning bolts and stuff. I think just those things are so badass to me. I love those moments. But I think if I had to pick one specific scene scenario, um, I'd probably say the the, the Egypt action scene. Yes, yes. I think I think just to how that plays out, um, it's such a badass scene where she's she's also having to work through the vulnerabilities of losing her power at the same time of trying to save people although if you do watch the scene where she grabs those two kids you can sort of see that they're dolls because they're their heads kind of <laughs> oh, no. the pavement but um it's uh yeah i'll say that specific action i think really stands out to me because it's a really well well Corey gaff that would fit right in and like it in indiana jones film yeah yeah and the movie definitely needed it <laughs> definitely needed it i um uh, Let's see if I can do this rather quickly. I, I I enjoyed this movie. I would watch it again as well. I I kind of man, I'm I'm thinking I liked it better score wise, but you guys kind of chimed in on some more more moments than I did. So interesting. I um I I think it all comes down to the charisma of our leads, really. Uh, Gal Gadot or Gadot and and Chris Pine, I think are great. I thought Pedro, Pedro Pascal was was wonderful as as Max Lord. Um, I I like Kristen Wiig in this. I thought she was fine because she you needed that that range. It could be this you know the awkward and you know to to, to transform into the one that was more uh, secure with herself. Um, it's great to see Robin uh, Wright and Connie Neeson again. Ne Neese, ah, Nelson again. Uh, Although I'm not really sure her lesson came back around properly that she learned in that, pre <laughs> but uh, who cares? It was fun. It was a good. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna. I was gonna go three and a quarter, but I feel like if I was doing three and a quarter, you guys should have been three and a half. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but I'll stick with it. Uh, my favorite scene. I have um, could have easily been either of the ones you chose. That those are both highlights. Uh, uh, very, very, very much so. Um, I, I'm going to go with the first time that Kristen Wiig as, as pre furry cheetah, when she's just human cheetah, goes up against uh, Diana at, mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, we're at they're not at the museum. Where are they at? The White House. The White House. Are they White House still? Yeah. yeah. And they just have that that, that confrontation with. You know, and they're and they're not only fighting each other. You know, you got the cops all around and security guards and stuff, and uh, Max Lord himself, right? So I, I just like to, you know, I, I liked what it meant. I liked, you know, the stance that she took. Uh, so I, I don't know, uh, she being 
um, the uh, Barbara Minerva character at that point. Uh, yeah, I'll go with that. And, and, and is it weird that like she's running around with this guy who's not Steve Trevor? All these people see him. I know. They're like, who's this random dude? And then, and, you know, he's <laughs> helping her out in the White House. And so I'm surprised they didn't arrest him. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Uh, so, yeah. There's, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's our review for Wonder Woman 1984. It is streaming now on uh, HBO Max. Of course, it's in the theaters. It's, it's doing as fine as it can be in this weird world we live in right now um i noticed that if i did want to go to the theaters to see it it was actually sold out um so i couldn't have gotten tickets if i wanted to go um so yay for that um of course you know you can only get so many people in the theater nowadays and everything but maybe maybe it's a sign that people are ready you know with the right film maybe you know maybe the dc and the marvel movies will do it for us get us back in the theaters get us back in the seats in the spring and the Summer and fall, twenty-one. I think also this film is the kind of film that deserves to be seen in a theater. I think some people's opinions might have changed if they'd seen it on the big screen with a group of people. Mm-hmm. But well, we really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah, the action sequences would have played a lot stronger, and yeah, or it might have you know put, the holes might have been larger if you seen. It. I don't know, uh, but at the same time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we had the opportunity to see it. I'm glad it came out this year because everything else in 2020 is coming out next year. We'll be talking about when we do our most anticipated list, it's going to be almost the exact same anticipated list as <laughs> last year. It's just going to be super weird when we do that here in a couple of weeks. But uh, uh, there you go. Uh, one of our last reviews of 2020. Uh, we got a few more coming, but uh, wow. All right. For those listening thank you christopher vanessa thank you for joining me this was a lot of fun always yeah always fun talking about superheroes Mm -hmm. yeah all right let's say good night good night good night (laughs) i can't